Today, we're talking about something that could seriously change how you work. Agentic AI. As an engineer myself, I invest a lot of time in learning about and using Agentic AI in my business. So I'm gonna explain this in non-technical terms for business use cases. Now, before I explain what Agentic AI is, let's talk about something that you are probably already using. We can call it a regular AI, or also known as generative or gen AI. You most probably know ChatGPT, uh, Midjourney, Claude, all these are gen AI tools. They're amazing at creating stuff, writing emails, writing scripts, uh, posts, making images, giving you ideas and brainstorming with you. But here is a big problem with Gen AI. Imagine this, you open ChatGPT and you ask it to plan your perfect vacation in South of France. And it gives you this perfect itinerary. It tells you to visit the stunning Moonlight Cafe for breakfast and then check out the historic tower at 2 p.m. and have dinner at Ocean View restaurant with beautiful sunset views. Sounds amazing, right? Until you realize Moonlight Cafe closed three years ago, that historic tower never has existed, Ocean View restaurant is booked out for month. So what's happening behind these Gen AI tools? Well, AI is daydreaming about some fictional stuff, but more importantly, the AI is doing the fun, creative, exciting part of planning the trip. And once it gives you this perfectly sounding itinerary, you as a human are stuck with all the boring work after, which is checking and validating if places actually exist and if you can book them, booking hotels and flights, making reservations, and so on. Or another example, think of beautiful video or a social media post that AI generated for you. Now you need to log in to all your social media platforms. You need to adjust the material slightly for each platform, do the editing, the final tweaks and touches, and metadata, polish the post, schedule the release time. So you are doing the manual tedious work while AI is doing the fun creative work. It's like the roles get flipped, right? The AI is the idea and brainstorming person while you are stuck doing all the tedious robotic work. And this is exactly where agentic AI comes in. So agentic AI does not just generate stuff. It actually does things for you. It takes actions in the real world for you. So think of Gen AI as an advisor who gives you ideas, while Agentic AI is more like an assistant who can actually complete tasks from start to finish. So to explain it with another example, think of ChatGPT that gives you this very detailed itinerary for a business trip at an event with minute by minute breakdown. But you still need to keep track of your schedule. You need to book taxi and check the routes, when you have to leave from where, to get in time to the next location, and so on. But now imagine instead if an AI had access to your calendar with all the schedule details filled out, and it also had access to your Uber or taxi app. So it would check your calendar, see where you need to be next and where are you currently, calculate when you need to leave to arrive on time, in your next destination, connect to Uber and use your business card to order a drive and notify you when you need to leave the building that you're currently at to meet your Uber driver. Like a very efficient personal assistant. That's an agentic AI use case. So how does agentic AI actually work behind the scenes or what capabilities does it have that enables it to do all this that I just described? Well, first of all, Agentic AI can connect to various tools and use them just like a human would. Like if you had an assistant by navigating the user interface of that application or even sending API requests like 
a program would do. And this is very important. It can also make intelligent decisions on its own by reasoning through various scenarios. And this is probably the most notable big deal moment in AI, which is that it can learn from its own mistakes and adapt itself. So it gets better every time it does something because it learns from the interaction with the real world. So the key difference is that agentic systems have permission and ability to act on your behalf. So you actually give them access by connecting them to your accounts on various tools. To make this even more understandable, let me give you some real examples that can already give you tons of value now when comparing Gen AI with Agentic AI. Let's take meeting scheduling, for example. With Gen AI, you ask for help scheduling a meeting. So it gives you a nice template to email people. And once you have that, you then have to send the emails, track the responses, find a time in your calendar that works for both of you, send the calendar invites, and so on. With Agentic AI, once you set up everything and connect your AI agent to your calendar and email client, you then tell your agent with a human language. In English, you literally type out schedule a one hour meeting with the marketing team next week. The AI agent will check everyone's calendars, find available spots, book the meeting room, send the invites, and as a bonus, even add the meeting agenda. So you do nothing except tell it what you want. Another super useful one, which we are actually implementing now in our business is customer service or customer support. With Gen AI, you can get like draft responses or outlines to customer emails that you need to review, edit, you know, add some final touches and then send the email. With Gentic AI, the system reads incoming customer emails, retrieves the existing information on the customer in order to write the emails with full context, right? Maybe they already interacted with you, so there is an email communication thread, or there are various details about that customer, like they have bought other products, they have finished and completed some of them. So the reply to that specific email can be with the full context of understanding that customer, making sure you're not asking information that you already have. Based on that, it can then answer some routine questions immediately, or if there are some specific questions, it can escalate those complex issues to the human support. It can create support tickets, update your CRM, follow up with the customer, and so on. So you see the difference of how agentic AI workflows start doing this extremely valuable chain or sequence of actions while Gen AI is limited to just giving you part of the solution and then you having to do the rest of the work, especially the manual tedious work yourself. We are actually already implementing some of these use cases and planning on implementing many more agentic AI workflows in our company because most of these use cases and scenarios are actually super common among companies. So I thought I will be documenting and sharing how we are doing it and what results we're getting here on this channel because I think it's gonna be extremely useful and valuable for a lot of people, especially business owners who are not technical. So they may feel a little bit of mental blockage towards AI and kind of understanding the technicalities behind it. So I'm gonna document the realistic results of agentic AI workflows because of course not everything is perfect and you need to put in the work to get it to almost perfect. So I'll be sharing all these learnings and implementation details on this channel, which means if you wanna follow along the journey and get up to date, replicate the same processes for your business, then make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for those follow-up videos. Now here is some practical advice when deciding where to use Agentic AI in your business. First of all, start with repetitive tasks like meeting summaries, tools that can join your meetings and transcribe them create summaries and extract the action items and send it to all attendees as a report 
per email. Very simple use case. And there are actually tools that can do that without any technical effort to implement because they're very easy to use. Second, consider data heavy tasks where humans get fatigued or make errors because of the massive amounts of data. Think about data entry and processing. Agentic AI can extract data from documents, it can organize it, it can update your systems automatically with the relevant data and so on. Anything that moves the data between your systems, especially based on different scenarios and logic can be a perfect use case for AI agents. Third, think about customer touch points where speed and specifically ones where speed matters more than creativity, like an agent that answers emails from potential customers. For example, you provide your AI agent with all the information about your products, services, uh, pricing, the benefits that your products and services offer, and it should be able to guide people who are interested through the purchasing process or decision by automatically responding to their emails. And last but not least, identify bottlenecks in your workflow that slow everything down. So what are the things that pipeline, let's say you have a lot of speed and there is one point that kind of blocks the speed and makes everything halt there. Again, to give you an example, in our case, social media posting is actually a big one. And the reason is because we are producing way more content than we are able to schedule across all the channels and all the accounts that we have. So using AI to schedule already prepared content across all the platforms daily or multiple times a day and report on performance of each post will be extremely valuable. This workflow is still in progress, but as I said, I will document all the learnings and the results as well as how exactly we're implementing this in the follow up videos. So stay tuned for that. Now, after hearing all these perfect scenarios, you probably have this question in mind, which is, is this too good to be true? And honestly, you should be questioning that. And I did too. And that is a very valid and very correct question because not everything is as perfect and smooth as it sounds immediately or more correctly depends on the scenario. So very, very important to note here. Currently at this point, agentic AI is not perfect yet, at least not out of the box. So it's important to set the expectations right from the beginning. I made sure to really understand the realistic expectations of how agentic AI would work in different scenarios. And again, it depends what workflows you are solving because they're tools for different use cases that work better than for other use cases. So I did a lot of research and talked to a lot of experts and engineers to really set my expectations right about how perfect the results would be and how much effort it will require to get them to this perfect result state. So here are a few things to be aware of. Agentic AI's performance will definitely be disappointing for complex judgment calls where you need lots of context or where it needs to consider many different things. Second, you need good guardrails to prevent mistakes when AI is integrating and doing stuff in the real world. Like imagine you have an agent that is making payroll transactions or writing important emails. So especially at the beginning, because I said AI agents actually become improve their performance over time by learning from the feedback of interacting with the real world. So especially at the beginning, it's very important to understand that it will make mistakes while it's learning and adapting. So it's important to have those guardrails to make sure that it's not doing super important stuff in the testing phase. But that means that AI has a learning curve initially, just like a human employee, where it learns to understand your business and become better and better at a specific task. So that's a very important expectation to set from the beginning and not to expect perfect results right from the start and also to prepare for those mistakes that AI makes. And finally, this is something important to consider when you're implementing those agentic workflows is that the more tools you give an AI agent to manage a single agent, the worse its performance 
gets actually. At least that's the state now. So isolating small use cases for an agentic AI workflow is very important. Instead of building and configuring one agent who does your calendar updates as well as social media posting and customer service is not a good idea. So giving one agent multiple goals or targets will actually degrade its performance. So that's why in many cases, the best practice approach is that people build multiple agents where each agent is actually responsible for one specific use case or task, similar to humans, where you have one team member who does uh, the front end, for example, another one does the back end coding, or one person does the accounting, another one does sales, the third one does customer service, and so on. And then you have an agent that manages all these individual agents, very similar to a human manager that oversees different activities of different roles. Now, overall, this still means that the AI revolution is not just about generating content anymore. It's tending more and more towards having digital employees that actually do the work, not just brainstorm or give you tips and advice or generate pretty images and creative texts. Or in other words, Gen AI helps you think while Gentic AI helps you execute. So the businesses and professionals who use this agentic AI power first will have a massive advantage. They will be able to do much more with less and move faster. And that's why I'm investing a lot of my time as well as money in learning and then implementing this in our business. So this basically means do not get stuck being the robot while your AI daydreams. Now, I hope this was valuable. And if you don't have immediate use cases for agentic AI, at least I hope this triggered your interest and helped you understand this trend. As I said, I'm gonna follow up with more practical hands-on videos on agentic AI workflows for our business from our real business use cases, which I believe will be very interesting and valuable for a lot of people out there. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.